I did not have an intro, but I have a mix-up in my schedule. Not really, but <laughs> we are having two episodes of the Cold Climate or Dozu in a row. Um, I just felt like it. I don't know why. It just, I don't know. I wanted to do it. So, I did. Um, honestly, this is a fairly short video. And whilst I have stuff to ramble about, don't you worry, I think I'm going to be crazy today and actually talk about the build and keep rambling for later. The only thing that has nothing to do with the build that I want to say is the tips video, like in the last episode I talked about how I will be posting a video on tips on how to stay motivated. It's coming out. It's way more work than I anticipated. I thought writing the tips down um, and recording the voiceover for it was going to be the most time it's the, it's, uh, oh my god, the time expensive? No, that's not the word. Time intense part? I don't know. Um, but it's not. It turns out, na na na, the actual editing and finding footage for it is way harder. <laughs> takes way longer. Um, so yeah, it's coming. Just not as fast as I anticipated. <laughs> so um, yes, anyway. Let's go talk about the build. Um, so we are building for the skunks and like I said, we are in the cold climate zoo and the doe zoo as we called it. And this little space right here, uh, I did not plan on using for an enclosure. I actually just thought I'd do foliage there, but I don't know, it just looked right for the skunks. So we have this very um, foot of the mountain thing. So it is, it has multiple levels, multiple uh, heights of terrain because it is going up the mountain and it also gives us a fairly cool thing where you see it once when you enter the mountain area or I guess exit the mountain tunnel or something um, and then you also again see it after like when you go up the mountain so you see it from up top and from down up <laughs> and um, yeah so that gives you the opportunity to see the skunks from two different angles because let's face it the skunk is not the most interesting to build for it's not a huge animal it doesn't climb it doesn't do much uh, at least the climbing frames are not um, showing up in the menu for the skunks so yeah there was not much that you could do an interesting feature so I just wanted a nice foliage work in here um, one thing that I saw when I googled for skunk for skunks in general and for skunk enclosures is that they really really like tree trunks apparently <laughs> there's a lot of very cute pictures of skunks that um sit around in tree trunks so um what i'll be doing which you should see in <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, you can see in a couple of seconds probably or minutes whatever um is that the burrows i hit them inside of little tree trunks so i think that looks pretty cute you can't entirely hide them because i think that they can't use them then honestly i'm just now realizing that i haven't even put the skunks in yet um i i don't know it was a pretty straightforward building process didn't need the skunks for anything so yeah, I'll see. I'll put them in for the uh, real-time part that is going to be at the end of this video. But anyway, I wanted to include a lot of uh, tree branches and tree trunks and whatnot. I did kind of hold back because I do feel like this area is getting a, a bit piece heavy and also the things I planned and stuff. I kind of want to hold back and then maybe in the end when I'm realizing, okay, well, everything still runs. Uh, it's not too laggy then I'll probably do a lot more detail work but this enclosure already has quite the detail work because I feel like with small animals you kind of have to have a bit more focus on the ground if that makes sense because you're gonna have otherwise you're gonna have this contrast of like a, a tiny animal on a flat just ground with nothing you know so I try to put more into um, Make, making the ground a bit more detailed for the skunks uh, or for small animals in general so that's what I did <laughs> um, and we are building a little bit of a house up there which I'm quite happy with I do have to see how they look in scale compared to the skunks but I am quite happy with it because it is quite modern to have this like um, first of all the glass corner there but also that it's like non-symmetrical and all that and I'm quite happy that I didn't fall into the, you know, I think a lot of people or a lot of times when you build in Planet Zoo, you kind of end up messing up the scale a bit because you have these like, I think they're supposed to be four meter 
walls and so you're like oh that's the standard height of a room but if you think about it four meters isn't <laughs> the standard height of a room um, and with these small animals they don't really need four meter high walls so they're gonna look a bit lost so I do I think I'm quite happy with the fact that I reminded myself to not have this to be too high so I built it out of the um, sandstone I think pieces um, no, are they called sandstone? Stone? Oh my god, sandstone. I, yeah, I think they are. But um, so I, I did do that and then made a roof that kind of it's it is set fairly high, but at the same time it's like visually lower because it's quite thick. If that makes sense. So um, that visually kind of lowers the roof, and I do think that this small little view there is kind of more accurate for the skunks because they're not that big and like I said they're gonna look lost if you don't do that um, and yeah I don't know like I said I wasn't really planning on putting uh, a closure here and I do think that it is sort of kind of a crowded area when you come out of the mountain but at the same time I think in terms of a tour, if you think about it, the mountain is probably not going to have a lot of animals to see. It's more of like a cool feature. Um, so I think maybe it's quite nice to have a lot of animals there to kind of, you know, so you don't, you know, when you walk through a real time, real, oh my God, real life zoo. And sometimes there's areas where it's just like you walk a, a bit and there's like no animals to see. And some people get really frustrated with it. I don't really, cause I actually kind of, I, I do really, think that the design of a zoo is very interesting even the parts without the animals so um i don't but i know for from my own work at a zoo that people get frustrated very easily when there's areas where there's not an animal instantly visible i mean they also get frustrated at enclosures where the animals is just hiding and i i don't know I think that you should be happy that nowadays animals can hide in zoos and that you don't see all of them all the time. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I get, you know, you go there to see animals and you know, yeah, well, I don't know. I just think that uh, all the stuff in a zoo is interesting. How did I get here? Oh my God, I said I wouldn't ramble, but I mean, yeah, come on. It, it still had to do with it, okay? Um, but yeah, I think that it's kind of crowded now here, down here. <laughs> Um, I mean, there is a flower bed and stuff to the side, so not incredibly crowded. I don't like it when there's like an enclosure to every side of the way. Um, but I do think that this kind of needs, uh, you know, some area to breathe into the other direction, if that makes sense. So I, I know um, in the penguin video I said that there's going to be a staff area um, and I will, I will, uh, make sure that it kind of has something pretty in the front of it so you know that it gives your eyes this like type to to breathe after you see three animals in a row that are like, pretty much neighbors um yeah um i did cut out fairly few things from this this was such a quick build by the way it didn't even take two hours i mean i didn't record all of it because i already knew some of it i wouldn't use but um let's just say around two hours probably which is so quick for me. I'm so happy with that. But um, I think that the thing that always takes me the longest is uh, actual architecture, like a surrounding enclosed spaces take me the longest. And this has a very small one. And I do think that I'm getting faster with building these things. Actually, I think right now uh, I'm about to put in the tree trunk bits around the hiding things, the, what are you called, um, burrows, <laughs> so yeah, I think they're about to be added there, um, and, uh, yeah, okay, what, what was I supposed to say, or about to say, um, yeah, I don't know, but now I have the tree trunks there, I really have to work on my memory, <laughs> oh, I know what I wanted to say, okay, so, like I said, I cut out some part out, and mostly what I cut out is a lot of rock work around, because this doesn't really have high walls or anything um, it basically is enclosed by rock walls which I thought probably are either carved or fake because you know they are conveniently surrounding this um, and 
and have like a blank side on the inside so that they can't climb up and they're like kind of fizzling out like more natural rocks on the outsides um, which makes for a good uh, natural enclosure or not enclosure um, like uh, surrounding not surrounding barrier that's a good word um, for a good barrier uh, surrounding them and then obviously the viewing points they have glass panels I'm not quite sure how actually how good that is <laughs> considering skunks could potentially spare you but I know that they don't do that very easily I'm pretty sure that they are like you'd have to fairly make them very aggressive. I, I think I've read somewhere that skunks tend to scratch and bite before they actually turn to uh, using the spraying, but I uh, could be wrong. <laughs> um, but I, I'm pretty sure I've read that somewhere before. And uh, yeah, I've been to a zoo also that had skunks. By the way, such a cool enclosure. It is uh, a German zoo called Zoom, and they have uh, it's it's a fairly new zoo, it is geographically, and they have this area that they call the Alaskan area, and there they have skunks, and it's so cool because the skunks, um, they uh, have an enclosure that you have to go into like kind of a wrecked school bus, because in Germany we don't have school buses. Um, and so school buses to us is, is a very like symbol of America, um, and so, you know, seeing a school bus, you automatically think of America. So it's really fitting that they have a school bus in this area. And so it looks like there's this school bus that like crashed into a rock and you go like into the school bus. And if you look out to the window, um, to one side, there is uh, a skunk habitat. So that's a pretty cool way. Cause you know, you have this like cool feature that you're gonna remember, obviously I'm telling you about it. Um, and it has this cool feature to an animal that is not always really visible, but it's still fun because you walked into the school bus. So I considered doing that here, but um, I kind of feel as though Dozu uh, is sort of already set in the US, so it wouldn't really make a lot of sense. Um, you know, because I don't think that people from the US would think of a school bus as a symbol for the US. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about it because it's very really cool. Um, and a reason why I really like skunks is because I always think of that enclosure. Um, and, but yeah, I just wanted to say that actually because they do have glass, fairly low glass panels, so I don't think they're too, it's, you're in too much danger of being stinky after leaving this. Um, but yeah, let's go over to the real time part. All right, you might be wondering, what are we looking at? Um, I just realized I've never actually shown you the inside of the mountain that we built. So this might be a little bit of a sneak peek on what we're doing in here. So anyway, <laughs> let's leave this cave. Um, this is the area that we've worked on. So when you exit the cave, you are greeted with this. And this is the skunk enclosure. I finally put the skunks in. I quite like that it looks so like up the mountain sort of. Um, and they're quite hard to spot, but there is one there. Over here, I've not unpaused the game. One is here, there was one. So yeah, they're pretty tiny, um, but very much adorable. Um, so I think that the glass is actually a very good choice for them because if they walk around here, you would not be able to see them otherwise, so. That is their enclosure. I do think that this building sort of looks sort of Asian if you look at it from down here. I don't, I don't know, it wasn't planned. I don't know what gives it the impression, but I, whenever it like catches my eye, I'm like, oh, Asian. <laughs> um, quite love the trees. Like really like the red that it gives here. Um, so yeah, let's um, go outside here and then basically, you know, this is the main path of the park. You would. We built an area here, which is, by the way, all I want to do, and then I want to, uh, well, I'll definitely fill up this area, like, this here and this here, and probably the mountain, which is probably when we're going to have our first little tour of the park, um, and then this area would be next, and then this area will connect up to the uh, exit again. So, just a glimpse into the path. Has nothing to do with the skunks, but um, basically... Well, this is why I wanted to show you. We're going to build our way around here. And then it connects back here. This is where we're going through. And then here, 
up further up the mountain is the other viewing area, which is where we're going to put ourselves down here. I do quite think that I will put a, a, a big zoo map right here because we have a, kind of a more central plaza thing with all I'm planned over, I've planned over here. And then obviously this big bridge is coming up. Um, but yeah, this I've stolen from, <laughs> I think the first time we used it was the Alpine Ibex. Um, and I just kind of made it a bit smaller and put it here. Um, and this is the other viewing point. There's one right here. Did I pause the game? No, no, it's moving. Um, oh, wait, is it, is it doing the sniffing animation? Oh, hi, cutie. Um, and there it goes. <laughs> so this is what I mean. It's uh, surrounded by rock walls, which you see quite often in Zeus, so that you don't have the feeling that everything's just surrounded by um, fence. So these are our two main viewpoints. So down here... And then up here, obviously. And then this is their little indoor thing. I don't think they're using it yet. Oh, um, yeah, there's one. Well, it's good to know that they can actually go inside. I wonder if the traversable area allows them to be sleeping up here. Because if it is, I'll probably remove the um, hay beds down here. So that they're kind of more close to the visitor. Um, it, I might put something on here. It looks sort of empty. Um... But, yeah, this will have, obviously, a sign on there. And then this is sort of a lot of room for more projects. <laughs> um, so let's just quickly check the traversable area on if they can go up there. Hello, sir. May I use your traversable area? Yes, they can. That's great. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to disturb them sleeping now, but I'll probably remove... Uh, the hay beds down there um but yeah i hope you enjoyed it it was a quick little video uh but yeah i hope you're not too mad that we did do two uh cult climate episodes in a row i quite enjoyed this one i just felt like doing it so let me know if you did as well um bye guys have a nice day that was weird i never say that <laughs> bye <laughs>